It is connecting. We are live on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> and I see you made it down to Mozart's too. I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. Hello, everyone. Looks like we are live. So excited to be here. I'm just going to check on technology here to make sure that you guys can hear me and that we are good. Let's see. Yes, we are fantastic. Okay, we're good to go. So if you are here, let us know, hashtag live. Uh, and if you are joining us on the replay, hashtag replay. Today we are here, we're gonna be talking about using LinkedIn for sales and why you should, as an entrepreneur, so you guys know this is a channel, this is a page. Um, I talk about business all the time, especially launching and growing your business online. And yes, we are on Facebook. We're doing this interview on Facebook and there are many platforms that you all as business owners need to know about, right? Your people, so, so you guys know my blueprint. So blueprint, the, the pillar number two is get to know who your people are and where they hang out. The thing is your people are gonna like a specific place to hang out. And specifically, some of your people are gonna wanna hang out on LinkedIn and LinkedIn is a really powerful medium for you to connect. And here on the show, I have this incredible man, Joshua Lee, who's going to be sharing a lot more, a little bit more, a lot more about uh, LinkedIn and how to like, just like LinkedIn sales one-on-one. -on -one. And, and I'm really, really looking forward to it because it's a, I think it's a different way of talking about sales and it's a different way of about talking about technology that brings in the human component. So really, really looking forward to that. Uh, quick introduction to all of you to the show. This is the Digital Titan Show where we talk about how to take your business, how to launch and grow your business online. My name is Luz Gonzalez and I am a digital business strategy coach uh, and super excited to be here. Also, happy Thanksgiving, y'all. Uh, Joshua is just coming back from LA uh, where he spent Thanksgiving with the family. Uh, Do you guys eat a lot of turkey? What, what, what's like your favorite Thanksgiving dish? Um, so my, my dish is after Thanksgiving, okay, just to be 100%. <laughs> so I love all the stuff, but I've been doing this with my family. My grandmother taught it to me years and years ago. So after you've got so much turkey, you've got so much everything, leftovers, and you know, Abby, you've already stuffed yourself for Thanksgiving, so you really don't want to eat those leftovers. So I make what we call a turkey stuffing soup. So take all the turkey bones, you boil them for like four hours. So I wake up the next day after Thanksgiving super early, yeah. boiling the bones all day, making a broth, wow. like making a bone broth. And then it's like you start adding in, you start adding any extra cornbread or stuffing into there. And then you're throwing vegetables and chopping them in. And then you, at the end, you throw the turkey in and it kind of makes this amazing soup that it have all, has all the flavors, but it's not the same as what you eat and it gets rid of all the leftovers. <laughs> So it's, it's, that's my favorite thing. Hashtag Thanksgiving soup. Like yeah. we, oh, by the way, you're all invited over Dasha's house right after this uh, interview. Uh, We're all going to have leftovers. <laughs> I make so much. This last time I was so used to my family being a big Southern family. We were at LA that yeah. afterwards we left. They're like, we still have four quarts of soup. What are we supposed to do with this? I'm like, uh, it's... <laughs> you sound like a Mexican family. Like whenever we have a <laughs> Mexican feast, because that's really what they are. And they call it el recalentado. So you wake up the next morning and you just keep eating. So I want to say hello to everyone who is here. We have Hallie, Kamal, Jimmy, Alonzo, Alejandro, uh, Joshua is watching, Dan, Charlotte, Alvin. Hello, everyone. Hey, Alvin. Good to have you here. Uh, and again, to everyone, happy Thanksgiving. I hope that you all had time to reflect on everything that we have to be grateful for. Also, happy like start of December. We are only less than a month away from the end of the year and also the end of this decade so like get your vision boards ready get your hearts ready get like get ready because it's the new decade so uh before i jump in and start asking joshua a bunch of questions about linkedin i wanted to share a little bit more about his background uh because i know that when i learned more about your background i was like oh my god this is amazing uh so for you guys to know if you're new if you don't know joshua before uh, oh my God, definitely someone to follow, someone to add on LinkedIn. So Joshua is an entrepreneur. He's a business owner, author, coach, marketeer, 
husband and father of two little ones. Um, uh, in 2003, he built his career online and online marketing with clients such as MySpace. You guys remember MySpace and Google managing over 100 million in advertising spent and controlling over 35 trillion online impressions. He has built 16 companies from online marketing to coaching to web design and more, but is most passionate about human connections. And I'm really excited to explore that concept because you guys know what I teach is based on long-term relationships. And we were talking about this, connecting about how it's kind of like the same thing. It's, you know, we might be online, but the thing is like, it's human connection. His current venture, Standout Authority, is about humanizing your professional and company brands on LinkedIn. So yes, we're going to be focusing on LinkedIn uh, through authentic and inspirational engagement. Some of his clients are big names that you guys recognize and know, such as Dan Sullivan, John Maxwell, Mike Koenigs. Koenigs, yeah. Koenigs, yes, Koenigs. Uh, and some other really big names that we cannot talk about here, uh, but, you know, name drops. Uh, and he believes <laughs> that B2B or b to there is no B2B or B2C. There's only H2H, which is human to human connections. Uh, and he is the author of Balance is Bullshit and believes that there is no work-life balance, but an integrated life based on vision, relationships, health, and business. So super excited to have you here. And as we start every show, we start with a little bit of just silliness. I think that so Do many- it. So many of the like the shows out there, everything's so serious. And I like to bring a little bit of levity into the work that I do. So you have two choices. We can talk about one, your spirit animal or your Hogwarts house. Which one do you want to go with? Uh, you know, I mean, I, I would have I would have said my Hogwarts house if I had made it to Universal Studios um, <laughs> when I was in LA, but the rain did not allow me. So it's a little sore subject. So we're just not going <laughs> to talk about that right now. Yeah, that's I was so excited. The, right my kids were like kind of excited. I was over excited. So, you know, it's one of those pieces. So spirit animal. Um, this was actually revealed to me many years ago. Um, it's the Chinese dragon. Um, so, you know, based on a lot of the pieces of why that became my spirit animal is because it's one of those, if you look at the thing of the giant, very flowing, integrated within yeah. the air, it's, it's not mm. over, but it, it can, it's a protective animal, um, which is there to be able to do, but in wise at the same point. So these are the kind of pieces mm. that really, I was going through a, a journey uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. with a shaman down, out of the country. Um, yeah. And this was really re revealed to me one time and I actually, I don't have it on right now, but my wife bought me recently a ring that uh, represents that animal. I've had many different ones that mm. come into my life and then somehow disappear and yeah. start over again. So yeah, super cool. So yeah. let, it get, let us know in the comments, what's your spirit animal? <laughs> All right. So super cool. I, I love that. The, the, the Chinese dragon. And I love the, the, like, the thing is about entrepreneurship. We think that it's, I, I don't know. I think that Sometimes people, especially coming into entrepreneurship, we think that it's less complex than it is. And I think that entrepreneurship is really one of the most like spiritual journeys you'll go on. Like if you want to talk about personal 100%. development, like uh, become an entrepreneur, it's like all about the, the personal development. Oh, so yeah. let's, let's talk about that, that journey and your personal development. Tell us a little bit of the backstory of how did you get to do the work that you're doing now and working with the clients that you're working now like why why focus on linkedin like tell us a little bit you know five minute where yeah. where were you how did you get here um yeah well i mean you know it's as you said i started my first company with companies like myspace i mean it's that's one of those companies that most people forgot about um i was kind of blessed and cursed at the same time right uh, so um being able to have them as a client we were monetizing all of their traffic uh, yeah. Back in the day when possibly some people don't know it or not, but arbitrage, we would buy low, sell high. We're buying their traffic and selling to overture. Um, it's great at a young age in my 20s. Bad is that you're making a couple million dollars a month all of a sudden very quickly. Um, yeah. And if you don't know what you're doing, mm -hmm. you can self-sabotage a lot. Um, and you're growing. And I mean, I went through many different phases as I do the Chinese dragon again. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, you go through many different phases of being able to learn and grow and fail. Um, and that's one of the biggest things that I learned. I mean, being able to take all that on, I mean, as my journey and as I grew more companies, 
monetizing a lot of traffic, monetizing a lot of different, um, aver- doing a lot of advertising, build the different companies, had success in, in a lot of failures, probably more failures than successes. Um, yeah. Talk about 16 companies, more failures than successes in there. Yeah. Um, and I hit a point where being married with kids and outside looking in, a lot of what had people had seen the success, which is we all look at it as monetary, right? I mean, oh, that person's rich, they're successful. Mm-hmm. I mean, we see this more and more even in today's world. I mean, where these amazing celebrities or, you know, that, that you know, commit suicide and have these things because you don't realize the pressures that kind of come in and how you get diverted very quickly from who you really are based on what society chooses who you are. Yeah. And that was kind of a, a huge coming because I remember I had my two kids. When I had my son, I moved into my house. And I moved my office back to my house and I always had the doors open um, because I wanted to always be, whatever I said in front of my son, I wanted to be okay with. If I ever felt I couldn't say it in front of him, I shouldn't say it at all. Mm. Um, and at a certain point, my doors started shutting and my home office not only became a sanctuary, but it became a coffin where I would stare at my walls for hours on end all day, um, not knowing where I was. Um, my, you know, we talked about this work-life balance. That's what I was always trying to achieve, the unachievable. Yeah. And it was, I was 40 pounds heavier than I am now. I'd never been overweight in my life. Um, I, my relationships were monetary. I had no vision about where I was going. I just knew where I was at and everything was work or play. Mm-hmm. Um, and I knew this had to change. Mm-hmm. And so that's where I started changing. And I, you know, I, I did go through a divorce. Um, I held my kids up. most important. I moved back in because I walked away from everything, moved back with my parents at 36 and with a little bit under a thousand dollars, my name was like, and I just had to restart and reset. And first it felt freeing. Right. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden it's like, Whoa, okay. This is, <laughs> I haven't, I haven't felt this way in a long time. And that's where I kind of looked at my business, my, who I was, and that's allowed me where I am now, which was. I had so I had gone so far against like traffic and monetization. I was the guy to go to. If you want to monetize someone, Josh can help you out. He can monetize anything. And I didn't want to be that anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wanted to see, I wanted to look at what I was what, what I was vibe for being like an only child was human connection. And I was yeah. like, how do we do that in, a, in an online world that we live in today? Yeah. And that's where I started kind of playing around with. And I said, well, what's the what's the platform now that really is one of the worst at it? Oh it wow. Was, that's interesting. That's and really that was the most underserved, which was LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, and this was before LinkedIn's the hotness now, but it wasn't then. And yeah. being able to go in there where everyone was spamming and pitching and selling all the time, 24 seven. And you're yeah. just like, oh God, this is, I, yeah. I don't want, and they, people would turn off their profiles. Like, how do we change the script? How do we flip this and make yeah. it better? And I started just going in and I looked at, you know, things that my mother taught me growing up that mar- half our, most of our moms taught us growing up, which was treat others like that you want to be treated, treat them as another human being, connect, engage, don't talk at people. And that's kind of where LinkedIn kind of started. And mm-hmm. look, I mean, I, I, I was lucky. I mean, I was able to have an amazing friends like David Gonzalez here in, in uh, yeah, David, you in, know. here in Austin David. and um, other amazing friends and being able to help them. And then it allowed me to be able to get access into with some of the groups that I was a part of. My real pivotal change was we were just talking about this at a, at a genius networking with Joe Polish, your first domino. I'll say my first domino was Yannick Silver with Maverick 1000. Mm. Um, it's a group of entrepreneurs. He believes that a thousand entrepreneurs can change the world. And yeah. he's hundred percent correct. And that's what he's growing to be able to do. And when I found that and got to meet these people and realize there's other people that can make money, be proud of it. Cause a lot of us, yeah. you know, you, you kind of, you know, we all have the friends, right. That aren't entrepreneurs or it hasn't achieved success. You kind of have to kind of pull back a little bit and also be able to do good on this world and be able to help others. Amen. And so that's where my kind of path really started changing and allowed me to be where I am now, which is about educating, inspiring, and drawing people in, never selling. Mm. And LinkedIn just happens to be the vehicle. All, all I do is net, with Standing Authority, we teach marketers how to be human online again. Yeah. You know, I think it's really interesting. And so for, for you guys that are watching, we have some topics that we definitely want to cover. And also, this is a conversation. So it'll be it'll be flowing. And we'll definitely get to some, you know, specific pointers. Real stuff. Some real stuff. Like, this is real stuff, though, right? So 
I think I, you, you've mentioned two things that I think are really interesting uh, and that like push some boundaries and edges when it comes to entrepreneurs. One, we talked about money uh, and like the feelings about money. And then two, sales. Like, ah, oh, when people like hear about sales, they like, th like it's, a, it's almost like an emotional reaction of like, oh, I don't like sales. But I, I think that it's also how you view both of these, how you view sales and how you view money. And I right. love, I need to learn more about that group. Cause I'm like, I absolutely believe that I like this way I do the work that I do. I believe that entrepreneurs will be the ones that change the world. Right. So right. when you, when you start seeing entrepreneurship through different eyes and different perspective, and you also start seeing money through different eyes and perspective, and you also understand that sales as it's traditionally has been done it. Yeah. In the past, people have done it in such a way that it's icky, but if you, you know, listen to what your mom said and, and these, then sales can be one of the most beautiful things, you know, that like that brings right. people together, that solves problems. So tell me a little bit more about your, your concept around sales. Well, before I get that, I want to, I want to, cause you were talking about the two things, right? Money and yeah. sales. So this is, this is what really helped um, a good friend of mine, Jesse Elder. He's actually here in Austin as well. I'm not sure if you've run into him yet or not, but uh also, and, shout out then, to all of my Austinites. All of, like, we're both in Austin. So if you're in Austin, let us know in the comments. Some text love. And, and for if you, if you guys are new to this, like, to my channel, if you guys are new to me, there's going to be a lot of hallelujahs, like, you know, preach, like, yes, like, feel free to let your emotions roll. We're in the South. Like, you guys can, like, get, you know, as much engagement. You guys let us know your comments, your feelings, your takeaways. Like, this is a space to participate. And we'll be looking oh, at yeah. your comments looking at your questions um so sorry and if i miss a question make sure you tell me and i'll make sure i try and answer it <laughs> awesome so you were saying uh so money. jesse taught me one thing he, he looks at and he, he teaches like where does money come from yeah and if i ask you that where does money come from have you heard this before no where where do you think most people go in like like from prayer, from hope, from hard work, from, you know, all the different things that most people go into. And I mean, I, I push everyone here before I give the answer to, you know, give me your answer in the comments below. Where does money come from? So and, let us in the comments, where does money come from? Your right. answer to where does money come from? The reason why I ask this is most people have a different, don't really understand the concept. And then I'm going to go into a little bit what the definition of social selling is, is going to make sense because where money comes from is other people's bank accounts. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't come from trees. It doesn't, you can pray all the day, every day of the week. I mean, believe me, I have faith and I, I have vision. I believe in myself, but it, you have to convince another human being. And I mean, this is kind of what it's all about. People forget that money comes from other people's bank accounts. And can we like Jesse, if you're watching comments like money comes from other people's bank accounts? So true. So true. And the, you know, they're like, oh, hard work. No, I mean, you have to do hard, you have to give hard work, but you have to understand where the end goal is. And I mean, yeah. this is what it's all about. So if it comes from other people's bank accounts, you need to connect with those other human beings first to engage, educate, inspire them to be able to take it from their bank account and put it in your bank account. Yes. There's not, it's not this whole weird, crazy thing. I mean, that's truly the most basic of what it is. And the reason why I ask this is what I do and what I teach, it's what most people don't understand. It's, it's true social selling. And I mean, when I ask people what the definition of social selling is, they'll go in, oh, it's selling on social, it's this, it's that. The definition of social selling has nothing to do with selling. Social selling is about leveraging your social network to find the right prospects, build trusted relationships and ultimately achieve your sales goals. We leverage social media to find, connect and influence business decision makers. So if you look at that, I said achieve sales goals, but I never said sell anywhere. There's no, nothing in the definition of social selling has to do with selling. It's about finding, connecting and influencing. And this is what we've forgotten, how to be able to find, connect and influence so find, and engage. Find, connect and influence and engage. Find, connect, influence and engage. Because if you sell, if I sold you on one of my products or services, I have to keep selling. We've all had it, right? You've had, you have products and services that have, you know, reoccurring revenue. They, they pay every single month. Every single month you have these people that come in and they go, okay, um, why am I paying you again? That's exhausting. It's not only hard for them, it's hard for us as well because they've been sold into your program or service. 
But if you yeah. educate, inspire, and draw them in, and they choose to join yeah. your program, your LTD, your lifetime value of a client, and yes. connecting with it extends exponentially because yeah. there was no convincing. They chose, they were educated enough because you took the time and effort to be able to do that. Yes. And they chose, they asked to be part of your program, not the other way around. And this is where we flip everything. And this is how, this is how I work. And I work with our clients to be able to help them be able to do this on, well, through the vehicle of LinkedIn, because everything I teach, everything we go through, it's just how to be able to connect with other human beings. You can yeah. use them across platforms. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, I love that. I love that, that, you know, cause I think what a lot of people are looking for, cause you know, I, you know, a lot of you that are watching this, you guys are entrepreneurs, you might be new to entrepreneurship, you might want be wanting to leave, you know, the nine to five, and you're doing entrepreneurship sort of on the side, or you, you've been entrepreneurs for many years. And I think what I hear often from entrepreneurs is like, I'm overwhelmed, there's like so much to do, there's so many places to be. And what Joshua is sharing with us is, is really a formula. It's like four things that we can do where your people are. So you guys have to do that research where your people are, that is just going to create human connection. It's like the human to human connection that you're talking about. So uh, it's definitely that this would work anywhere. So let's go. Ahead. Yeah. And I'll say, and that's why we were talking about, you know, understanding, right? Which platform. I'm, and this is the whole piece. Everyone goes, oh, everyone, all your clients are on Facebook. I've worked with people and, you know, in their programs. No, it's not always the case. Some of your clients might be, some might be Twitter, some might be Instagram. So yeah. LinkedIn. Yeah. That's why we're here today to be able to say, look, here's why LinkedIn, if yeah. this is what it is. And I mean, I'll tell you exactly Well, you and I are going through a couple of things on what's going on on LinkedIn, how to be able to connect and be able to figure out if it's right for you or not. And if it is, yeah, how to be able to draw in the people and be able to leverage a platform that has organic engagement, like yeah. circa Facebook 2008. Yeah. Yeah. That's so powerful. So let's go ahead and follow up on that question. So why LinkedIn? Well, I mean, I look at LinkedIn with a lot of different things. It's a platform that most people do not know how to connect. I, as I said earlier, they're always selling, spamming. I mean, you get them all the time. You know, to, you connect with someone two seconds yeah. later, like, hey, let me, yeah. you know, let yeah. me sell you something. And it's just like, holy yeah. crap. You yeah. know, I mean, can yeah, I get a, like, you know, can I get a handshake? Like, and they're yeah, like, I mean, hey, Luz, I, you know, I checked in with you, you know, three times, four times, four, just like selling at you. But, you know, I see that you're not interested in this thing. Like my, my profile says I am no longer in, you know, the technology world. I no longer am like a fintech startup person, but you still are trying to sell me something around like startup. Oh, yeah. You didn't even take the time to read what I do or like it, it was pretty obvious on my profile. So, yeah, like I, I, I feel that that sometimes the frustration of going to a place like like LinkedIn, it's like it can feel icky because like all the messages are just like a copy and paste message that was like sent to you as soon as you connected you're like do I really want to connect with you because you're just going to send me a copy and paste like a message that like yeah. serves no purpose no provides no value to me so yeah and that's why you can be, be a unicorn you can be a butterfly in the platform if you actually treat other people the right way and, that, and that's be what we're going to be talking about today because first and First and foremost, I mean, the, the type of clients that are on there, the reason, I, you know, most of the people that I work with have high-end products or services. Um, on average, at minimum, well, I should say at minimum three to $5,000 a month, if not higher. So my clients have $50,000 a month um, products and services that um, they sell. And then we help, we help them engage and draw in the right clients. Um, LinkedIn, there's over 650 million members uh, on the platform. Now, that, comparably to Facebook, yeah, I get it. It's about half. But there's over two, there's more than two people joining every second on LinkedIn. So it's becoming a very hot platform. Um, fun fact, 41% of all millionaires use LinkedIn. Huh. So, you know, now if you're trying to connect with millionaires, good way to be able to jump on them. But I mean, that's the bigger thing. I mean, I look at, because I work on with clients that have high-end products or services, we use LinkedIn because based a lot of times too, because of average salaries. So do you know what the average salary of Twitter is right now? Do you have a guess? For like a, like a Twitter, someone who works at like Twitter. Like an average user. What's the average salary across the board? Uh, oh, got it, got it, got it, got it. Not someone who works at Twitter, someone who- No, like, no, 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 yeah. 
the yeah. users, like uh, who would we would be trying, the audience that we're trying to yeah. get access to. And, and I think this is a really interesting question, um, which is going to speak to you guys about what platforms you guys should be paying attention to. Um, Twitter. Uh, I think Twitter, I don't know, like 80K. Well, so the last I checked, it was $58,000 a year. Oh, okay. Facebook is 61,000 a year. Now, yeah. just to give you an idea, the, the median household income in the United States is 64,000 a year. Yeah. So those are below median. Now that doesn't mean that there's more people in the home, but if it was, you're talking about single, single family, you know, people living in what that's below the average median across the board. Yeah. Now, because we deal with a lot of high, I want people that have a higher disposable income too. Not only can I connect with them, they need to be able to buy my products or services Absolutely. and the higher disposable income they have, the better opportunity they have to be able to do that. I'm not yeah. just speaking at an audience. Yeah. So when you look at LinkedIn, the, as of, I think last month, the average income across LinkedIn was $118,000 a year. Yeah. That's a huge jump from 61 yeah. to 118. 18. And do you know the number for, uh, so I had heard something very interesting that was similar for podcasting that like the average podcast listener also was earning around a hundred K. So as you guys yeah. start about your platforms, where your people hang out and where the people, because we want you to, we want you to make money. Like we want your business to make money. So to make money, you can't like show up in a place where people don't have any money to pay you. And then be like, Hey guys, I have this amazing product. And they go, that is amazing. I can't pay for it. Like, well, you, you know, eventually you can work with those people or help them. And, you know, you're, you're going to have the ability to find, connect, you know, influence and engage with them in other ways. And, uh, in, you know, LinkedIn is a great place. If you yeah. are looking for a higher, you know, average for disposable income, that's going to be a good place for you to be looking for your people. And, and also like, I'm, I assume I am correct to say that for B2B, it is a great place to be. It's well, really that's the thing, right? I mean, and, and you know, if you want to classify B2B, 80% of all B2B leads come from yeah. LinkedIn. 13% yeah. come from Twitter and seven come from Facebook. So based on, the, but remember marketers like you and I, well, not like you and I, because we're different. Yeah. Um, but marketers really came up with B2B and B2C. It wasn't a thing. Um, you know, up until about 20 years ago, they came up with this. We're like, oh, well, if we separate out, now we can actually diversify ad spends and yeah. be able to get more money and people to spend more money because, oh, well, we got to spend, and now we're not just spending one stream of income, uh, spend. Now we have to spend here and spend here. So it was an ability for us to be able to make more money. But every company is run by another human being. And yeah. as marketers, we talk, we've been taught over these years, we talk at people. Yeah. And that's not what we do. Yeah. You, you and I are having a conversation. We forgot how to talk with people on LinkedIn where we're writing copy, when we're writing email copy, when we're writing, you know, a, whatever copy we're writing, it's yeah. always talking at someone, not with someone. Yeah. So you have to be able to change to, you know, not what can I sell you, but how can I help you? Mm -hmm. so you know, I mean, these are the biggest yeah. things, you know, how else can I add value? You know, asking rather than telling. That's what so many people are going in and doing. They're, they're telling it, but we forget to ask the question in the beginning. So, so I have a question, like, so that, like jumping into the, the weeds of like how to, right? Like, so, all right, so we're not, let's stop talking at people. And I think this is probably gonna be across platforms, probably a good idea. Let's stop, stop talking at people and start asking and engaging and having conversations. So what are some of the best ways that you've seen on LinkedIn to engage with those conversations. So one is through like actual messages that you send to people. The other one is through your content. Mm -hmm. I, you know, like I, I want this to be like a very, um, like just like real conversation. I think, I and I love your thoughts. I think that LinkedIn so, still, I, they haven't dropped the ball totally because they're, they're sort of working on it. But like LinkedIn groups just does not compare to Facebook groups. They're, they're working on it. I know that like, it's something that people have been like talking about for forever and they sort of have it, but what are all the ways on LinkedIn 
that you can have these interactions and provide value and have conversations, what's the best way to do so? And it's funny that you talk about groups because groups is really good. And then somehow they took all the features away and I was like, what the hell happened? And then it's, you know, and then now they're trying to rebuild again. Yeah. So uh, I, I get that side. So, I mean, how I actually do it, I mean, first and foremost, you know, one, you have to be able to understand who your avatar is, who's, who's your ideal client. So before everything, we have to be able to understand that because if we're going to create content, it needs to be clear, consistent content, the three C's. Yeah. Um, and I hate cold calls and cold email. So if I'm going to treat someone like I want to be treated, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to cold email. I'm not going to cold email, cold emails, cold call, any of that shit. I don't spam. So I go a different way about putting out clear, consistent content. I only want to engage with the people that engage with me. So the way that our engagement engine works, that we work with our clients and building it up, we yeah. engage with people. So our human condition of being online is a certain pattern, right? We have a human condition of liking, commenting, sharing, keep on moving through, correct? That's, yeah. that's usually, most people can, in the human condition of being online is like, comment, share, keep on moving forward. And that well, we have to create these stop gaps and, you know, pattern interrupts for someone to actually listen and be able to hear. And this is what we've forgotten how to be able to do. Uh. And that's what we show our clients how to be able to do. So this is one side of, of being able to engage on LinkedIn. When's the last time, Lewis, that us, you posted? Now, you might be because you do these amazing interviews and things like that, but most people on here, probably when they like, comment, or share, when's the last time that someone reached out to you and was like, hey, listen, I just want to say thank you so much for liking my recent post. Mm. Mm. Does that happen to you? Do you get a personal uh, message? It happens. Okay, so... It happens on Instagram and it feels like a strategy. It is and it isn't, but you have to be, when you look at it, starting with appreciation, right? Most of us as human beings, and remember what I teach and how I work is all I'm doing is adjusting in the human condition. Yeah. Um, LinkedIn is just the vehicle that we use because it was an underserved platform. Yeah. So appreciation is what most of us do not do enough throughout our so day. We don't appreciate, right? I mean, it's, we go through, so I always start with appreciation above everything. I saw I reach out and I mean, it's like, hey, Lewis, I saw you like my recent post X and I just want to say thank you. Cause I mean, too often we don't appreciate these little things. Yeah. Um, I'd love to be able to connect with you and find out, you know, what drove you to check out my post. So good, yeah. So see how that's a little bit different and it opens up a conversation. I'm not just saying, hey, I'd love to connect with you. And that's, we're doing that with everyone that's liked, commented, and shared. I don't care about views. These are great. That's good for vanity matrix metrics, but views don't, aren't engaged. When people look at that stuff all the time. I, the, yeah. If they take time to make an action, this is yeah. what I want to appreciate. And especially when there's second and third degree connections on LinkedIn, yeah. I'm inviting them into my world to be connected to me and finding out why I'm opening up, I'm not saying, Hey, I want to connect with you. Thank you. And why? Yeah. All right. I'm laughing, I'm laughing because, you know, so you guys, for, for you guys to watch the show or follow my stuff, you guys know that I teach business through the language of long-term relationships of like loving partnership. And that's exactly what you do in partnership. Like if exactly like one of the main tenants of a successful partnership is appreciation. I, it was just like, you know, it was one of those moments where I was like, oh my God, that's so right. Like, I, I like I preach that when I'm talking about relationships, but you know, if I'm super honest, like I had forgotten, you know, other than like to say my one-on-ones and the people that I work with right. really closely where I appreciate them all the time. I think sometimes with those like common shares, those engagements, it, it like, it just like, you know, like went over my head. And I was like, I, I haven't stopped to really appreciate. And that's huge. It never happens on LinkedIn. I mean, that's all people do. And I mean, I'm not doing anything. I'm, I'm opening up a conversation, right? I'm, yeah. I'm looking to be able to connect and find out what pushed them to like, because there was some reason why. Yeah. And when you appreciate them first, they're more apt to start a, because that's what we're trying to do is start a conversation. They're more apt to tell you, well, thank, thank you for thanking me. Um, <laughs> Uh, well, actually I checked out your post or they'll go back and look at it. Right. Like, oh yeah, yeah. Matt, I did like that post. And then you start a conversation yeah. that drives a little bit farther because the like is yeah, it's still superficial, but at least it's slight engagement, you know, comments are more, so you can actually start being able to judge and share is even better. Hey, ah, I saw you share. And because we're referencing the post, it, it sparks a trigger because 
as humans, we do remember more than we actually pay attention to. And when you say the name of the post, hey, I saw you like my post X. Because mm. guess what? Automation, and I'm going to tell you right now, the, before all that, the one thing I've learned as human, as, as, as a man especially, um, it's, hey, John, I'd love to be able to connect with you. Or, hey, thank you so much. Um, or, hi, Luz. Because you don't want to hate a woman. It's not, you know, it's like, <laughs> hey, what's up? No, you don't do that. All so, right, no, no haze for the, for the ladies. Hi. All right. Right. <laughs> Hi. I, you know, again, so you're not going to, hey, what? It's, it is funny. I was at an event here in Austin. And a friend of mine's like, really? Like, like, be like, look at her over there. I'd be like, hey. And this, this woman turns around and he's like, I get it now. Yep. I mm -hmm. understand. I said, exactly. Think about how we act in, in real life. How, if you're looking yeah. to talk to someone, I'm not going to be like, Hey, what's up? You know, kind of thing like that. So first and foremost, an automation doesn't pick this up. I mean, LinkedIn is constantly looking. They have made it their passion to yeah. find if you're automating and if they find you, you're using automation, they are going to block your profile that you're going to be gone. And I get people all the time. How do we pick this? You don't. You start a new one if you if they allow you to with an email, you got to go through the whole process again. Yeah. So we have like with my agency, we have real human beings either yeah. teaching or doing it for the people, our influencers that we work with, and being able to go in. Hi, hey, hey, I like your post X. Being able yeah. to have these real human conversations because at, at, when someone responds, automation won't always know how to respond to that. My human yeah. being will. I mean, yeah. we've had, we've had conversations where someone goes in, I mean, case of point, someone that mentioned, this was God, about a month and a half ago. I just want to, you know, the response was to one of the influencers I work with, you don't, you won't ever know how I changed your, you changed my life today. Mm. I was at an end and I was going to take my life, but yeah. by you appreciating and something so small and I, I took it as insignificant you've given me new hope and new faith in this world. And I mm. promise that I will take that on and keep pushing it forward mm. from here on to the, to the, to the, for the rest of my life. Wow. And I mean, these messages, when you just create space yeah. for someone, because yeah. that's what we've forgotten, especially as influencers, as marketers, we're not, yeah. we don't create space, not only for our, ourselves to be heard, but for them to be heard as well. Mm. Mm. That's and that's so what we're doing. Good. That's so good. You know, it reminds me of, um, of a moment I went to a, you know, like a marketer's event and the, 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 the person who was leading this event, he was talking to people, you know, uh, you, you, you guys are here because you understand that to, you know, we business and engaging with your, your customers, your clients, you know, your people, your tribe, it, it, it in today's world, it is a component of online and offline. Now, when we're talking about online, what can happen and i've seen it happen for me and i know that it happens for many of these online entrepreneurs it's there's almost like a dehumanizing of the like the dehumanizing of the comment the dehumanizing of like the engagement forgetting that there's a real human being right. behind that engagement and so he said some of you guys feel so you know like down on yourselves because you only have a hundred followers you only have a hundred students and then he had people stand, like he had a hundred people in that room. It was like 2000 people, a hundred people stand. And when I saw that, it was just like, it was like, oh my yeah. God, can we please remember these are very real human beings behind an online profile, whatever, yeah. like they're real human beings. And so I think it's so powerful what you're talking about in terms of just like how we, how we engage with people in ways that we we haven't i don't know I, I think like just like i don't think people are like meant to but it's just like this online world and so let's not forget like none of us forget that there are very real human beings behind that profile and that's what it's that's what it's about right i mean it's it's not about a numbers game i mean I, i'll go through and people go well how do you get rid of all these spammers like as soon as someone pitches me they're deleted if they cold pitch me not, mm. I'm not here to, I don't, this creates more noise in a world that's already noisy. Oh, yeah. Know? So how do we actually defeat the noise? Well, I'm already 
we're conditioning, changing the human condition of online. When I appreciate someone for like, comment, and sharing, guess what they do more of? They like, comment, and share, which allows me to connect with more people. It allows me to educate more people. That allows me to draw more people in. So we're teaching them and helping them and we're showing them how they should act. Mm, and that's so that's awesome. the start of it, right? So that's one side of it. I mean, my our engagement goes through multiple different things from appreciation to compliment to qualifying question and mm -hmm. then to add value. And at that point in time, they're allowed to go in. And if let's say you're adding value and someone responds back to your, your a qualifying question, let's say you don't have a sales team and you don't have a lead page or something like that. Yeah. We take them through and I'll be like, hey, that, that's an amazing response. I, do you, would you mind jumping on a call with me for like 10, 15 minutes real quick and just tell me more about that? Hmm. Now, because we haven't sold, we haven't talked about anything, we've only appreciated, complimented, and qu asked questions about who they are, and now we're asking to find out more. When two people get on a phone or a video call or whatever it might be today, um, and the, you, I allow someone to talk, um, and they're done talking, and they, when we were asking the right questions, what do two people that have never met before, one person has finished talk, telling you about themselves, what do they naturally do after that? They're going to ask you, what about you? Holy crap. Amazing, right? So now all these walls and barriers that we put up about being sold are now been knocked down and someone's invited us into their world. They're listening now. Yeah. And now we can tell them what we do, not sell them. Yeah. We can actually tell them what we do because we don't have to sell anymore. Yeah. Now we can educate, inspire, and draw them in based on what we just heard, what we learned about them and have a real conversation, it's, it's what I call the, the couch, uh, the door to the couch mentality. So we've all heard, you know, we've been doing sales for a long time. It's the, the sell me your, sell me this pen thing, right? Yeah. It's been around for like 30 years. If I knocked on your door, like old school door to door salesman said, Hey, it was, you know, my name is Josh. I want to tell you, you're closing the door on me before I can even have half my, but if you and I are hanging out, we're sitting on the couch. I'm like, girl, you got to check this out. This pen is amazing. That's pretty much because we have some kind of emotional or connection because I took the time for us to get to know each other yeah. and the ability for you to go, wow, that's amazing. Let me check that out and then make your own choice mm -hmm. to be able to buy or, or not buy it is yeah. there, but it's a much higher probability for that to be able to happen. Yeah. That's what we're doing. We're creating that relationship. We're having many coffee conversations and mm -hmm. we can take it from first engagement from cold. No one, never, they've never heard of you before. This is the first time I ever engaged on one of your posts. Two, opportunity, we're on a phone call or they're in your, to close in seven days. We've done it for our clients to be able to go through that process, to be able to warm someone up that is human, that is yeah. educational, that's inspirational and be able to do that aspect. So that's just one side of what we do with our clients yeah. on LinkedIn. The other side is social listening. You probably heard the term used a little bit here and there, social listening. Mm -mm. So social listening is taking the time out to actually listen to your clients and see, we live in a world where everyone's posting. Mm. If, you, if you take two seconds out to listen, and you, this is again, you have to know who your, your avatar is, yeah. who your ideal client is first to be able to find them. LinkedIn makes it really easy. There's this thing called Sales Navigator. Yeah. It's $80 a month. And this is kind of where that definitive defining moment happens. If you can't afford $80 a month to be able to make one sale, LinkedIn's not the platform for you anyway. Uh, it's an easy thing if it's eighty dollars a month is too much for you to spend to get one sale if because if you're selling widgets it's a hundred you know at a hundred dollars or less it's not your platform yeah it, it really isn't yeah. but if you're looking you know if it, but if you can be able to do that sales navigator is not just a marketing platform it's their built-in crm it's actually a social listening piece that we do this is it's amazing it shows you when you can define who you are and then go in and say all right, these are the people that post in the last 30 days. Why does everyone post online? Everyone, I don't care who you are. What's the main, most core, most visceral reason why everyone in this world posts online? Connection, engagement. The most visceral. Uh huh. And first and foremost, that most of us forget because some people go, oh, for sales, for advocacy, for this, for that, is to get a like. They want that hit of dopamine every single time they get that like. 
-hmm. I don't care who you are. First and foremost, above all else, they're, they want to get a like. Because that yeah. gives them that engagement. That gives them that hit of dopamine that we all love to get. Yeah. It goes, oh my God, someone liked what I said. Someone likes me. Yeah. Yeah. So when's the last time that we do this for anyone else? So if I want to go in and get my clients, LinkedIn, average engagement on LinkedIn is under 1%. Now, I'll tell you, my clients get anywhere from 6 to 10% average engagement on all their organically on all their posts because we're going through these different processes, because if you post something I, and you're, let's say you're my ideal client. First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see that you post. I'm going to reach out. I'm going to appreciate, I'm going to like your post. I might be one of the few. I'm going to comment. I probably might be one of the first people to comment on your post, depending on how much you're using LinkedIn. And I'm going to reach out and go, Luis, hey, you know what? I just wanted to reach out and connect with you because I, I appreciate that recent post you did. And I'd love to be able to find out more because I saw, I found a lot of value in it. Mm. That's a much more human connection. I've liked a comment and then I reached out to, I, we, as I told you, we always start with appreciation. Yeah. So we do either appreciating people that like engage on our content or engaging on someone else's content and reaching out to appreciate them for posting. It all starts the appreciation. So when you start this funnel, you have two sides of it and it's going down and it's mm. all starts with appreciation going into, and then you're going in through compliment, qualifying question, and then being able to start the conversation from there. The appreciation funnel. And I hope you guys, uh, after this is done, I hope you guys save this video and keep coming back to it and taking notes because there has been so much gold, so much good stuff that has been covered. Um, so I have a, a more of a logistical question, right? So Please. I- you talked a lot of- Yeah, no, oh, I, I think it's been great. So suppose for someone, uh, we have a lot of, in, in this channel, we have a lot of solopreneurs, like we have a lot of small business owners uh, who when, you know, and I'll talk about my experience. So I think I used, I didn't use Sales Navigator. I used, um, there's like three different options. I use like one of the ones I clearly like. One of the, yeah, you pay for the, yeah, to be able to see who's viewed your profile. Like, yeah, like that. what are the three options? Do you remember what the, the like the your options? Your career, are? you have sales, and then you yeah. have executive. I mean, got it, got it, got it. Like okay. Re recruiter. Got it. And so the one that you're recommending is the sales one. Sales Navigator, right. Yeah, it's $80 a month. It allows you to be able to get their built-in CRM system. Got it. And so what are some of the, some, what are some of the best practices that you would recommend for people? in how they should think about and why they should use sales navigator or how to use sales navigator any sort of like inside knowledge or like that they should know about how to get the most from it well i mean it's amazing it allows you to be able to go through and be able to really select across different borders on who who your clients are where they're posting um i look i love what it shows who's posting the last 30 days right because this allows me to listen at the same time if there's influencers so there's different posting i talked about clear consistent content yeah so I believe in the 10, 20, 70 rule. Have you heard of this rule before? No. So the 10, 20, 70 rule is 10% personal, um, mm -hmm. especially on LinkedIn, because look, it's not Facebook. You don't even know about my, my fan. You don't know, need to see when my kids are going to school, but people connect with other people. So if you think that you only can yeah. talk about your business, about your work and what you do and never talk to you as, not, as you as a human being, you're missing out. People have that engagement. That's the couch, you know, the door to the couch mentality. Yeah. How do we actually build that? So posting 10% of your posts need to be about you, who you are, yeah. what you like, what you do, yeah. things of that nature as a human being, not as an entrepreneur. 20% yeah. company, because look, we've all seen that person in the room that's always talking about themselves, like, oh dear God, there's Josh again. That dude only talks about LinkedIn. <laughs> It's exhausting. I need to avoid him at all costs. We don't want to be those people. Yeah. You still yeah. have to talk about your company. So 20% of your posts are all about your company. Yeah. Great. 70 is other than adds value to your audience. If you know your audience and who they like, what they follow, educate them, be an aggregator of content. Very similar how you draw, yeah, how you're bringing in other people like myself to be able to add value, but it doesn't have to be just this. It can be their articles. It can be their content. It can be the shares. Because this one not only allows you to be able to get access to their audience as well, because you're able to share and appreciate. Wow, I saw this amazing post from, um, you know, whoever it might be. Let's say Joe Polish or Dan Sullivan or Tony Robbins, whatever it might be. Yeah. I just want to share. We're starting, again, starting with appreciation. Man, check it out because I got this value from it. 
Now yeah. you're going to have more audience that drains those second, third degree connections in. And if you're the person that educates someone on the issues and they finally go, wow, I had that problem. I need to solve it. They're going to go to you for the solution. Even though it wasn't your content, you're the one that provided value. We want them to go in like Yahoo back in the day, whereas an aggregator of content, we went there every single day to find out, to make sure we go in and see that. I want people to go to you every single day to see, oh my God, what, what are they going to post today? Yeah. You know, really add value to my life. Yeah. That's really so that's good. The 10, 20, 70. It's much easier to create content that way because you're only worrying about the 30%. The 70, you're just gathering and sales navigator allows you to be able to do that because you can actually go in and tag your influencers and different people like that. And it'll show you what their posts are on one feed outside of LinkedIn. So you can go, wow, this is great. I want to share this. That's so good. So, so good. I love that. The 10, 20, 70 rule. I hope you guys are writing it down. I hope you guys are taking notes. I hope you guys are busy with your like your notebooks. I know that I've been taking some notes. I'm like, oh, this is good. I'm trying to give as much as, as I can. <laughs> you absolutely are. So I have a follow-up question in terms yeah. of the, the people that might feel... So this is like a good problem that you would have at this point. So suppose you're engaging, you're having a lot of conversations with people, you're providing a lot of value, and then you have a lot of people talking to you. How does someone without like a team or with a team, how do they like go through all of these conversations that you've now started? Do you have uh, like, do you have a, a, like, are you using, you know, pipe drive? Are you using, is there some sort of pipeline? Or like, how do you, track all of these conversations and like make it so you're not overwhelmed in right. the the work that you created for yourself and and going through like which ones are the right ones like just i think a question that could arise for people is like what about overwhelm and talking about questions uh as you guys are all watching so we have wyatt john beth aaron jimena jonathan reza natalie sheila myrna Kelsey, uh, David, I just want to appreciate you. Joe, Fard, Jorge, Michael, I really, we are appreciating you guys talking about appreciation. We're so glad that you guys are here. And as we are getting to, you know, close to the end of the interview, let us know your questions so we can answer. I'll even go back in after two. I promise after we're done, even if we don't answer it, I'll make sure I will respond to everybody. Awesome. So share your questions in the comments. Uh, let us know if you're here live or let us know if you're on the replay, but share your questions. So talking about overwhelmed messaging, too many people, too many conversations, like uh, it's a really good thing. But so any tools, hacks, resources for how do you do it? Yeah. I mean, you know, there's a lot of different things that you can go through and do. I mean, as, as I tell anyone, if you're spending more than an hour a day on LinkedIn, you're stepping out of your zone of genius. And I mean, this is the biggest problem with most entrepreneurs. They try and wear too many hats. Like they got yeah. to take it on. You have to understand what an hour of your time is worth um, yeah. before you can, you know, if you're spending an hour of your time and or could you be hiring someone else to be able to do this for you and be able to manage it? Um, I mean, we have specific pipelines, you know, we're going and engaging, we're looking at responses, we're, we're understanding. I mean, it's every single day. So it doesn't, we don't lose track. The message yeah. is coming in and we have different, um, you know, spreadsheets that we use. I mean, there's no real great um, system and this is why probably I'm in business because we yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we take on all this responsibility so those entrepreneurs can be exactly what they are we, we become them and we able to help them with the strategy and things of that yeah. nature um, we also show a lot of our clients how to be able to do it fast but it's it's daily you need to be going in and spending out spending yeah. an hour a day I mean uh, on your LinkedIn and I promise you you can actually go through it you have to understand, right? I mean, it's, you're going in to appreciate, you know, then they're connecting and then you're endorsing, which is our compliment. Um, and then you're going in to ask once they respond back, Hey, thank you for endorsing me. Wow. Here's a qualifying question. Once they respond to the qualifying and, and you're able to see these patterns, but if you're actually doing it every single day, you yeah, don't yeah. lose track there. It's fairly easy to be going. Cause you just see, you just go in and what's my, Go in, unread messages, boom, go through, and you're just going one by one by one, taking yeah. the process in the funnel. And when you're doing this every single day, the ones will rise to the top. After your qualifying question, we have some clients that will go in and drive to a lead page, right? So, I mean, hey, I, you know what? That That's an amazing response. You know, I've got an exclusive webinar I'd love to invite you to. Um, now, they, now they roll into your lead. Now they run your other lead funnel. Yeah. So there, there's ways to be able to do it depending on what you're going. You don't have to get on a phone call with every single person because that, that's exhausting as well. Yeah. And so, I mean, it's, if you ask the right qualifying question, 
Um, okay. It's amazing. Like one of the qualified questions we go through, do you consider yourself an entrepreneur or a business owner with an entrepreneurial mindset? Yeah. It's an, it's an amazing, because what you're trying to do is ask qualifying questions that actually make someone think yeah. and give a very strong response, not a yes or no, not a basic. You want them to go, wow, okay. And, and to be able to want to continue to have a conversation, why would you ask that? Why, you know, that kind of thing, that kind of nature to be able to really draw them in and go, ooh, I never thought about it that way. And they'll give you the answer that you want to see to be able to give them the next response. Got it. Got it. I love it. And I love how this makes it so literally no matter what their response is, you can help them. You can provide value. You can either you can help them yourself. Or you can say, you know what, like, here's a great resource that you can, you can use. And like, that's why I tell everyone, I say, look, you know, I'm, I'm not here to actually, to help you get clients. Look, if you're looking to be able to monetize an offer, there's a, a thousand people behind me that are willing to take your money. And that's mm. exactly what they're going to do. I'm here. I help my clients build advocates and allow the byproduct to become clients. Yeah. And the reason why we do this is so many go in, I see it all the time. I hit, see these LinkedIn experts. And they'll use the same automation. Believe me, I get the, hey, Joshua B. Um, have you ever thought about using LinkedIn for for uh, for, for getting clients? I'm like, you didn't yeah. look my profile. The reason why I know really quickly they're using automation is yeah. my name and my headline is Joshua B. Lee. So as soon as I see Joshua B, hey, Joshua B. Or, hey, Joshua B, I want to uh, personally reach out to you. I'm like, bullshit. No, yeah. you didn't. No, you didn't. Yeah. You know, I know you're automating. You're going through. But at the same point, we want to be able to go through and be able to connect. So, I mean, you want, where was I going? I just lost my mind. You're like, ah, hey, what's going on here? I went to headlines. I'm like, shit, what were we, what were we just doing? <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we were on overwhelmed. We were on how it's able, uh, you're, you're able to provide resources no matter what. So that's, that's it. So again, we're going through and they go through and they're like, look, they're fine with that one sale out of a thousand, but I look at it, you're going, you're pissing off 999 people, <laughs> right? That's what I see. Yeah. They get the, they're like, well, I got the one sale. Well, oh, that's stupid. How about we make those other 999 people that weren't even going to be clients anyway, advocates, because mm -hmm. we added value, we provided value to them. That's so good. The one sale. Yeah, that's awesome. See, look, I'm human. I, I even lose track of where I'm at. <laughs> uh, Nicole, you said repeat that, please. Uh, if you let us know exactly what the piece you want to What would you like me to repeat? Um, that we would repeat it. Uh, awesome. Great. So we, we've talked about, well, actually we, we haven't talked about one really main thing. Uh, are you okay going over a little bit? Yeah. I've okay. got, I've got, I don't have a call till three 30, so I'm good. Okay. Great. We're going to be here all night, five hours. You had no idea, but we're bringing you so much value. Just kidding. It's not going to be five hours. It, it might be like another 15 uh, yeah. minutes. Okay. So talking about your, so your, um, like one thing that I'm really, really passionate about, and I talk to my clients about all the time, it's like your branding, right? Like when people arrive, so I talk about business through the language of relationships. And the way that I describe it is suppose the love of your life is gonna be walking into the cafe. You're in the cafe, except you're in your PJs and you have slobber all over your, you know, you're, you're like, you just like woke up and your hair is all like terrible. And they walk in and you're like, oh, I definitely don't want to talk to you. And then they walk out and that definitely did not lead to a date or marriage or anything, right? Same right. thing in business. So let's talk about their branding, their profile, like their, their identity, their presence on LinkedIn. Like, What are some of the best practices that people who are on LinkedIn, who are going to find their people on LinkedIn need to follow in terms of making that hot first impression that like, yeah. oh, hi, like, yes. Uh, you're interesting. Let's, let's, let's engage. Let's have a conversation. Well, you know, I mean, the, the profile is what I call your tip of your spear. It's the tip of your funnel. If you do, if you build out your profile the best way possible, that will do the selling for you. Um, with everything else that we do, it'll give the provide enough information that everyone will be able to go in there. So, and I know that we're going to be providing um, a little special uh, thing for everyone here at the yes. end. Really yes. Um, so we're, we're talking about, you know, your look on or your profile on LinkedIn. So Joshua is very uh, graciously and just like, it's very, um, it's like amazing of him to, he's gonna be sharing a resource where he is going to be sharing more of the pointers and the things that you should be doing when it comes to your profile. And before we continue here, uh, Nicole did uh, share her, her question. So 
Um, what was the question to ask them as you're qualifying them? So, I mean, it, it really has to relate to you. So, I mean, as you're going through, what's your, I mean, I deal with so many different types of clients, but I mean, how do you actually get someone to give you an answer one way or another? So I guess the one, one that we've used for our particular clients we're working with, like, because I work with a lot of high-end business coaches. Um, so it's, are you an entrepreneur or are you a business owner with an entrepreneurial mindset? Most entrepreneurs don't understand the difference. And there's a huge difference because look, I get the people to say, I'm going to be an entrepreneur for life. I'm like, wow, that it sucks. Because being an entrepreneur is exhausting. You're working 24 seven. I mean, look, I have to be an entrepreneur when I need to be, but I mean, I don't want to have to go back 15 years and, you know, and, and work 12, 15 hour days anymore. I've, I've done that. You want to at some point be able to grow to where you're a business owner, and you, but you still have the entrepreneurial mindset because you can't be the person that actually sees where the company is going and sees where you're at, at the same time. You have to have two, two different people doing that. And as entrepreneurs, we have to be the visionaries looking where we're going. When you find someone that understands where they're at and they're like, hey, I'm a business owner, but I still have entrepreneurial mindset, that means they've achieved a certain level of success in their business and they have a staff that actually can allow, they probably have a little bit more expendable money to be able to hire and be able to do these types of things. So that you have to be able to kind of ask a qualifying question that is relevant to your audience, what you're looking to do. Um, and I can't just give you like, it's a, it's, yeah. it's a one fit all, right? Um, it's kind of like, like rolling into profiles. The biggest thing that I tell everyone is everyone goes, oh, I'm the CEO, founder, um, director, sales marketer. Well, that's in your profile. That's part of the profile. And you never want to write your profile like a resume because unless you're looking for a job, it shouldn't be a resume anymore. It's a, it's a different platform now. LinkedIn was purchased by Microsoft two years ago for $24.6 billion cash. Their largest cash purchase ever. So wow. this is why we talk about profiles as well is because your profile is going to be, is already getting integrated in everything Microsoft. Mm. If you don't think that it's going to be across Skype. It's going to be across Outlook. It's, it's already integrated into Word to be all these different wow. pieces. We're going to be taking that information. So if you put your, you built a, oh, I, I got a LinkedIn profile. I did it 10 years ago. It's probably wrong. And it's probably that information now is getting disseminated across all the Microsoft products and services and is getting ready to. So you want to make sure that's on point. So how do we that's do how it? people are going to find it? How do you make it on point? And by the way, if you guys want that resource where he shares more information, type rock my profile in the comments and we'll make sure to reach out to let you know how to how to access the, this freebie yeah. where he's gonna share more about how to rock your profile. So tell us how to we'll how do go we through a couple different pieces, but the first and foremost is your title. Because first, people see your picture, right? So they're searching, yeah. Yeah. Um, whatever they might be searching for. Um, and they're going to see your picture. So look, it's same, like you stand on that whiteboard, fine, have a white background. It's, it's not our Instagram. It's not our Twitter. It's not our Facebook. They don't need to see us, you know, um, at the lake or, you know, wherever it is. It has to be professional. But if you don't wear a three-piece suit or you don't, don't wear one on there. I mean, you're not going to see me in a suit on LinkedIn because yeah. that's going to be incongruent of who I am. Always be you 100% of the time. It's so much easier than trying to be different people. You don't have a, Always. as I talk in my book, right? You don't have a business life and a personal life, right? You have one life because if you had two different personalities, you'd be locked up in an insane asylum. You have one <laughs> life. You have to live it that way. So online, offline, be that person. It's easier. Yeah. So, like with your title, what I tell people is I help X to achieve Y so they can do Z. Mm -hmm. so I'll say that again. I help X. X is who you help to achieve Y. This is what you do. And then to, I'm sorry, I help X to achieve Y so they can do Z. And then Z, so they can, this is why people buy. So it's who you help, what you do to help them, and what they get in the end. Because that's why people buy a Z. I help X to achieve Y so they can do Z. That's what your headline should be. Because it's customer, it's, it's client facing forward. Once they go in, like, oh my God, that they're self-identifying. I am that person. Wow, I need that. Oh my God, I would love exactly. to do that. Yes. So good. So good. And this is, guys, if you are selling on any other platforms and if you want to build a tribe, if you want to bring in people on any other platform, this, this format, this like 
I help people with X problem to do, you know, I help this specific group of people with this specific problem to do, to get these results. That is something that needs to be within your five seconds. It's called the grunt test. You have five seconds to either make it or not make it. So that needs to be clear on any place where your business has a presence. Right. And people um, buy with emotions, make decisions on emotions. They don't, if you can't evoke an emotion within that too, that's why the, the Z is there because that's what you're trying to evoke emotion. I mean, it was, I mean, it's the whole thing, right? If I held a, a $1 bill and a hundred dollar bill, technically the piece of paper is worth the same, the same printed on the same paper. It's the emotional value that we hold to it. We know there's not enough money in the, in the banks to, to back up the piece of paper, but the yep. emotional ties that we have to it for that hundred dollar bill versus the hundred gives it the value. A lot yep. of times, I mean, it's, it's a little bit, it's a stretch, but I mean, I'm trying to really get people to see that yep. it's people buy on emotional triggers and that, and so they want to, you have to be able to evoke an emotion for them to be able to make a decision. So how do you evoke more of an emotion? Do you make it, do you really, really speak to their pain? Do you speak to their aspirations? Do you speak mostly to the benefits? Like what, you what know you your client's pain and pleasures? I mean, again, there's certain pieces that you need to be able to do, you know, what outcome are they looking to be able to do? Well, I yeah. help them make more money. What does yeah. more money do for you? It, well, it provides freedom. That's that's so broad. Well, it's going to allow me to, you know, you have to keep on, this is why questioning is right. Well, what do you mean by freedom? What's freedom mean to you? Oh, well, um, I'll be able to spend more time with my family. What's that look like? Man, you know what? I've been really wanting to, uh, you know, be able to make it to my kids' baseball games. Oh, now, now we're getting somewhere, right? I mean, so you have to take them down the rabbit hole yeah. and you have to think about for your own thing. I mean, I have clients that are coming like, hey, I want LinkedIn. Well, cool. And I'll ask certain questions. You know, who, who do you work with? You know, I ask that X, Y, Z question. Yeah. Can't do that. We've got to go through before we get to LinkedIn. We need to go through message mapping. We need to go through avatar. We need to go through all these other aspects, because if you don't understand these pieces, you have to understand your own pain. As entrepreneurs, usually we're trying to fix something that we saw that was an Amen. issue within ourselves. So we're trying to provide the value. If I was, you know, someone that was extremely overweight trying to teach you how to lose weight, you're going to be like, no, I, I don't believe it. Or I get the people like, hey, Josh, I, I sell a program that teaches people how to make seven figures online. Well, how much do you make right now? Well, I make, uh, you know, I make about $80,000 a year. I said, well, how the hell are you going to teach someone that make uh, seven figures if you can't do it yourself? Mm -hmm. So that's the biggest thing is look within yourself for that pain. Yeah. Look, look to evoke the emotion. What evoked emotion to you? What pushed you to do what you do? Because mm -hmm. if you know what pushed you first, you're then going to be able to relate. This is why storytelling is so important. Storytelling is so important, which a little segue tomorrow in my Facebook group, if you haven't already joined, we're talking about storytelling for business. So you want to make sure to join because storytelling is so important. Okay. A little, little, little snippet in there. So, I mean, we could go through so many different ways. I mean, this is, I, as you see, I, when I used to run my other companies and made the money, yeah, it would be bad now, but I mean, it's, I didn't, people didn't know what I did because I didn't care. I wasn't mm -hmm. passionate. When you hear me talk about what I do now, yeah. I can't help but not smile because I love what I do because I see yeah. the impact every single day. I see we're helping, we're educating, we're inspiring. I've never sold anyone. I mean, I probably sold a whole bunch of crap. I don't know if they did or not. Yeah. I got to spend a lot of money in advertising. Yeah. I drove a lot of traffic. Yeah. But now I see the impact. I see the response. I see the messaging. And I see the engagement, the, the appreciation that others feel from yeah. you, from us, from influencers that we yeah. provide this, this space of being heard. Mm -hmm. And most people don't have never have, have forgotten to be heard anymore. And mm -hmm. as influencers, we've forgotten to hear them. Listen, so important. So, so beautiful. Um, so we're, let, let's, let's wrap up. So if someone, because <laughs> um, we, we could really be here all day. So if someone had to start all over and their main client is on LinkedIn, yes. what would be, you know, the five to 10 steps that you'd say, these are the things like if you were starting all over and your clients are on LinkedIn, like how do you, how do you build from zero when, you know, you're like, all right, this is, this is the platform for me. I'm going to follow all the best practices. What would you say are like the five to 10 steps that like they have to follow? 
Yeah. So first and foremost, we want your profile to be on point. So, you know, you want to rock your profile. Make sure that if you want that, comment below, rock my profile, and I'll get that, we'll get that out to you. From there, there's four things you need to do because LinkedIn has what we didn't, we didn't have time to get into it, which is called an SSI score, the social selling index. Their algorithms based around this. As I said earlier, organically LinkedIn right now is like Facebook 2008. Facebook has become pay to play. We spent all this time getting likes. Now we have to pay to get in front of them. LinkedIn, if you have the right content, you're within their algorithm, the organic reach is massive. I mean, I've done tests where I took the same Facebook group, a video that a friend of mine posted, I put it on LinkedIn. We had 10x the amount of engagement um, within the same 24 hour time frame. The things that you want to do is there's four things I'm going to tell everyone to do. It should take you less than five or 10 minutes once you get going. So every day you want to do one post that adds value to your audience. Again, this is you have to know your audience first. Let's assume that everyone knows who they're talking to. Number two, you want to reshare someone else's post that adds value. Let's say an influencer within your space that actually complements what you do. Third, you want to like someone else's post. And number four, you want to comment on someone else's post. If you do this, one post, one reshare, one like, one comment, four different posts, not the same thing, not the same one, or not the same two. Yeah. You want to do this across where you do this every single day, the SSI score goes zero to 100, all right? And to be able to get organic reach, wow. massive, most of organic reach, you have to be over 70. Mm. Um, and I'm happy to be able to, you know, we, this is the things. I, if you know what your SSI score, you can post it below as well. And yeah. I can give you a couple of tips. I can give you a couple of tips on how to be able to go up, but I guarantee you within 30 days or less, you will be over 70 within the organic algorithm. And this will start drawing in more organic content. And it goes, oh, they're doing what we want. Remember I told you, they want you to act appropriately on the platform. They will reward you for doing that. Yeah. So you're showing them how to be able to do this. Um, You'll find their SSI. Um, you can go to, I mean, you can go to standardauthority.com slash SSI or just go to Google, search in LinkedIn SSI, log, be logged into your LinkedIn, you'll be able to find it. Awesome, super yeah. cool. So uh, those are the things, if you do that every single day, one post, one share, one comment, one like, every single day, you will get within over 70 and then you'll start seeing more again. And two, you're just doing, you're engaging more. I mean, Gary V, who's a very big proponent of LinkedIn as well, yeah. he calls it his dollar 60, right? You know, he, he goes in and everyone has their two cents. And he goes, you should post, you know, you should comment on 80 people's posts every single day. I'm going to tell you right now, that sounds exhausting. Yeah. Um, to go in and comment on 80 different posts every single day. It's great. Gary has done amazing things in his world. I think that's a little too much. I mean, we're a little bit more active, right? We're engaging with people. If we're posting yeah. criticism, kind of engaging with people and then social listening and engaging with on the people's content that we really yeah. want to engage with and taking time out to be able to do those two things. And then starting a conversation with it is much better, much faster, and much more opportunity. So, what about content sharing on multiple platforms? So, suppose you like you did a post on. So, okay. So, here's something that I I I find to be a problem with LinkedIn is I'll have this like really amazing moving post on on Facebook, and I'm like, I can get a tenth of that like the length characters. of the post, yeah, on LinkedIn. So, what I've been doing. Yeah. Like my little hack has been I put it on medium and then I take that one tenth of it, share it on LinkedIn and then lead them either to Facebook or lead them to medium. And like thoughts, like hacks around. Uh, like so here's the whole thing. If you do that, they're seeing you're drawing off platform with any platform, even on Facebook, not YouTube. I mean, yeah. they see you're drawing off platform. Yeah. They're not going to, they want to, to be uh, natively posting and engaging on their platform. And yeah. You'd be uploading videos natively. So Here's the bigger thing. People go to Facebook to be able to lose themselves in someone else's life. Yeah. We go to be able to step out our own lives to be able to live someone else's life. They're our quote unquote best life. You know, the 10% the, the of happiness that we share on Facebook outside of the other 90% that we don't. Yeah. Um, everyone looks yeah. like they have an amazing life half the time. Um, on LinkedIn, people are either going to make a decision or get information to make a decision. Mm. So you want to be to the point. So where you might want to have a long, like we couldn't do, like there is LinkedIn Live now, but on LinkedIn, your videos, you want to push in the average person across all platforms that is less than seven seconds that someone watches a video. 
So you have to be able to grab them in the beginning. Now on LinkedIn, the most you want to be able to do is one minute videos. You want to be able to provide information and value and evoke an emotion within a minute time frame because they're looking to go in and they're looking to be able to go through. If you take too long, they're never going to get to your CTA or what your the end value. So you have to be able to give them in bite-sized information they're able to consume because they're not there to go spend five minutes on a post to go read it. Now, if you want to be able to share that, LinkedIn articles, publishing is amazing. They spend tons of money on there and the engagement, the notification. Look, I mean, you and I could go through, I share articles, I share daily on how to be able to use LinkedIn best. You yeah. follow me on LinkedIn, look for Joshua B. Lee and follow me there, connect with me. Tell them that you, you and I, talk, you saw me on Facebook. I share articles, I share daily things. How do you do it? I mean, and on posting, on articles, on everything, on videos, I try and share as much information as possible. I mean, I, I want to be able to give it all, but I mean, that's the best way to really be able to find it. Absolutely. Uh, and especially if you got this amazing post. Um, so with some of our clients, they have weekly emails. Well, what we took those exact weekly long emails yeah. and then we posted them in an article, which then all your people that are following, you get notified, hey, Josh just posted a new article. You want to check it out. That's God, a lot so easier. Article, not to notify them. Articles. I didn't even know that existed. <laughs> uh, and because it's Google, because it's LinkedIn, because it's Microsoft, Google indexes it better than it would be on your own blog. Wow, that's okay. So the SEO aspects of it are amazing. That's amazing. That like that is definitely something I had never heard about. I didn't even know that articles, LinkedIn articles existed. So that was awesome. I mean, we're seeing right now with some of our clients, we're getting here from 50 to 70%. So there's less traffic and noise. Yeah. But the engagement levels are between 50 to 70% engagement rates That's on huge. their articles. So wow. like if we, you might get a hundred likes out of 120 views. Yeah. Now here's the thing though, the people that are going in and reading or commenting going through, I'd rather have that. I don't care about 50,000 views. Yeah. Those people are just viewers. They're yeah. lawyers, right? We want yeah. people that are really taking the time out to be able to do that. Yeah. Awesome. Super cool. All right. So. <laughs> Any last things that you would say to someone who's considering LinkedIn, anyone like it, any, any last thing you're like, Oh my God. And before we close this interview, you guys have to do this. You guys have to know about before this. Before anything, always, always, always don't ever send a blank connect your request. I mean, I delete it. Most people do it. Don't pitch someone on LinkedIn. There's an amazing platform. You need to go on there. You need to be posting, you need to be sharing, you need to be connecting. But if you're going to reach out to connect with someone, make it real, make it authentic you know, and over and put a message on there of why you're connecting. And then overall, authenticity has been played out by marketers. You know, they've got, oh, I've had a hard life. I'm now living in my car. You don't know, realize it's a Tesla, but I am living in my car. And it's like, you know, so real and raw is better than authentic. I hate to say it right now, but real and raw, we all have cell phones. Take it out. If you have a thought, make a quick video, share it right then. Don't, if you overproduction, shows that you're about to pitch someone. I, we instantly understand different trends. I'm like, oh, there's bumpers, there's this or that. I'm probably gonna get pitched at the end of this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move forward. Unless you're a massive influencer, you can't do that. So Real and Raw beats it every single day of the week. All right, so Real and Raw, uh, I, I hope you guys join me in thanking Joshua. This was incredible, you. So what I really, there were so many things that I appreciated about Joshua. From the beginning, what he said was, Look, what I, what I want to do is I just want to go in there and provide massive value. I just want to go in there and really serve this community. And so I, I really want to acknowledge you and recognize you for that. Like, I really felt that from the beginning, the way that you just like gave so much value, so much content, so many strategies. I hope we can all say thank you, Joshua. This was awesome. Uh, we'll have to meet at some point. We're in Austin, like Austin exactly. X. Uh, and thank you to everyone who watched. Let us know again, replay live. Let us know if you need questions. Joshua said he would answer your questions. Uh, let us know what your top takeaways were and go find Joshua on LinkedIn. And again, remember to type rock my profile. If you want this little, uh, not this amazing resource, this like tool to help you rock your profile. So that's it for today, guys. Tomorrow I do have an interview, uh, about storytelling for business in my Facebook group. And then on Friday, we have another interview about creating offers, like offers that are sexy and you know, everything in our channel is sexy because we talk about relationships. It's all about like language of love.
So make sure to join the Facebook group uh, to follow more of this. You can find Joshua anywhere. Where, where can they find you? So here Look they can for me find anywhere. You. It's usually Joshua B. Lee. I mean, or the Joshua B. Lee on Facebook, Twitter, you know, Instagram, all those aspects. And then Joshua B. Lee on LinkedIn. So, I mean, I'm, awesome. I, try and, I try and keep it easy. <laughs> and uh, Carlos, thank you so much. He says, this content is amazing. Love this information. So again, we appreciate you all so much. Sending you all so much love. And uh, I will catch you guys again for the next interview, for the next show. See you all. Bye.